Reagan Replay, 1981. With Bo Schembechler and Jim Brandstatter. Brought to you by the General Motors Corporation and its Pontiac and General Motors Parts Division. By the General Tire and Rubber Company. And by Budweiser. Hi everybody and welcome to Michigan Replay. The Wolverines are two out of two in their drive for the Final Four. Illinois, the latest victim on Saturday, 70 to 21. Getting back to those days of the tough, hard-nosed defensive <laughs> struggles, aren't we? No, not really. As a matter of fact, if uh, that game had continued or Illinois had continued the way they were the first quarter, that might have been a 70 to 70 tie. <laughs> <laughs> How do you explain something like that happening? Well, I, I think maybe uh, the defenses are not quite as good um, as they have been in the conference. And um, there's a lot more uh, big play uh, players uh, you know, on both teams. Um, Illinois, uh, with their great receiving and uh, great quarterback, and, and on our team, of course, uh, we can hurt you a lot of different ways now. So it was one of those games, you know, it's, it's nice, uh, you know, 70 to 21 is nice, but it makes you a little bit nervous uh, when you stop to consider that uh, the other team got uh, well over 400 yards on your defense and even though you won the game big um, you know you're not going to score 70 <laughs> points very often <laughs> we will be right back with a look at the highlights and there are a lot of them 91 points worth stay with us Bo because Illinois started off so fast I think it took you out of your game plan against them, didn't it, early? No, as a matter of fact, when uh, it went 21-7, and frankly, it looked like it was going to 28-7, uh, we grabbed uh, Steve and said, we're going to still uh, stick with exactly what we're doing, and we're not going to change. And uh, But we've got enough stuff to get back in the game if we have to. But um, uh, I didn't want him to get that last one. That would have really hurt. Standing on the sidelines when they opened up. This, this is the first play of the game here, Jim, and he, uh, Easton keeps the ball and runs around in on a fake, and because um, we're all playing pass, as you know, and then they hit one in the seam down here between our corner into the sideline and our free safety for a big play, and you know, sooner turn around, they're deep in our territory, and fakes the same play again and goes in standing up for a touchdown. And we're trailing seven to nothing following the opening kickoff. And it had to concern you because it was an easy seven to nothing. They didn't break a sweat hardly. Uh, no, I don't think they did, Jim. To be honest with you, but we come back here on a third and two, and um, and Steve hits uh, Anthony Carter for a first down at the 40-yard line. This is right after the ensuing kickoff uh, after Illinois scored, and then Steve comes right down over the middle on the post cut to Anthony. It was a perfect pass, and Anthony did a great job in man coverage of running the post route and beating their cornerback to get free. Well, when are people going to learn you just don't do Anthony one-on-one? -on -one? Well, if you're going to blitz and play heavy defense to stop other things, you've got to do that, and uh, that's what happened. Here, their tight end catches a, a little um, out cut into the sideline and gets big yardage. They come right back and uh, run a Sally play. We call this a Sally. It's a reverse. A flank a reverse and it's a big play for them and as you see those yard stripes pass Jim I want you to know they're inside the 20 again and uh, it didn't take them very long here they are on the five yard line and breaks outside and runs around our defense for a touchdown and the score is 14 to 7. Are you at this point saying what do we have to do? Are, are no at this point Jim I'm doing a wonderful job keeping my poise <laughs> and, and not getting upset. Uh, here's a screen pass, uh, well executed, and uh, their tailback gets out to about the 40. <laughs> we failed to move after they scored, and now this is their next drive, and once again, they hit that ball right in the seam. It's exactly the same pass against the same defense, and uh, Eason, at this point, is doing a great job picking our defense, and here he hits the tailback uh, quick in the, uh, into the right flat, and... Uh, that makes it 21 to 7. Now, are you still in command and keeping your voice? Yes, look at me there. I'm, I'm <laughs> chewing the gum a little hard, <laughs> trying to trying to hang in there. Uh, here's the second quarter, and we hit him just as he got this ball off, and, and uh, it was a great pass to Martin, their 
uh, receiver down that same corner, and they're down there again. This is a play that got us back in there. East and red man coverage, and they ran an out and up pattern with their tail back, and her guys settled back into the zone and then came in and intercepted the ball. If there can be a turning point in a game like this, was that it? I'd say come as close as anything to being it because, the, you know, had they scored, then they'd gone 27 and uh, we might have been, had a tough time. And again, you don't go away from your game plan, really. Not at you all. stay with it. We ran uh, counter play to, to uh, Edwards on the first play and then came right back with the option uh, and pitched it out to Butch for a big gain and we're cross mid midfield. Steve comes out here and uh, throws down the middle, threw a little short, but Anthony went up and got it. He had his man beaten and uh, then went up and got the ball and we're down to the five yard line. And then on third down from the one yard line on the option play, Steve is hit right here. And you can see the strength uh, this youngster has because he bowled his way right into the end zone. Uh, with um, Illinois tacklers all over. It's an asset of Steve Smith that I don't think a lot of people realize until they see him do something like that. He's a very strong uh, youngster physically. Uh, he's only 190, 95 pounds, but he, he's strong. Here's a great play where they were playing um, kind of conservative down there, throwing to the halfbacks, but uh, Needham jumped in front of that one and uh, intercepted it for us, and now we've got a great field position. We'll score 21 to 14. And here, uh, Steve rolls out, hits Craig Dunaway uh, quickly for a touchdown, and uh, we're right back in the game. First play after the interception, you're on the 10 and you go to the pass. What happened to that old? Well, whatever, you know, the defense wants you to do, you do, Jim. <laughs> and, uh, and there you go, that's the most points Illinois scored on us in 66. Here they throw down the middle again to uh, the tailback coming out of the backfield, and, and uh, moving real well here. Here's an outcut that they hit on us and they're down inside the 10 <laughs> again. And uh, we stiffen here uh, finally and they run this draw play uh, for no gain. And um, we finally get them uh, stopped and they go to the field goal and they missed it. And uh, that helps a lot because at that point uh, they could have gone ahead again but now with the score 21 all, uh, we get the football back and uh, there's just a little time left. We run the draw to, to uh, Butch, and Butch comes out for a good gain, and uh, we come right back and draw again. This time uh, the draw is with uh, uh, Steve, and he comes out, crosses midfield. When you started the drive, did you think you had a chance to, to go the distance? Well, we've, we've been able to do that before, and if you can mix them up, anything can happen. This is the key play. This is uh, nothing more than a quarterback draw against uh, defense in which uh, all of the defenders lock on to the eligible receivers. And when they uh, separate, uh, there's an awful hole right in the middle. Uh, Gary Moeller put that play in and insisted that if they got into that coverage, and uh, as soon as they do, we'll run that play and, uh, and we'll score. 28. And that's what happened. 28 21 at halftime. Now you're going off. I mean, most times, 28 21 is a final score. Yeah. You must be wondering, you know, what's going on and what do I say at halftime? Well, uh, one thing you say is we'd like to play a little tighter defense. <laughs> now, that, that's fundamental, and, uh, and uh, we felt that uh, we still had some things that we hadn't done offensively, and, uh, and we didn't have the ball a lot, but we did score 28 points. But, you know, it's, uh, it's maybe one of those uh, games, Jim, where you just got outscored. We'll be right back and take a look at the second half highlights, which include 42 more points, but they all came from Michigan. With a 28 to 21 lead against Illinois at halftime, the concern was the 21 on Illinois' part. Now, did you make any adjustments at halftime on defense to stop that great passing with the hit? Well, I, I thought Bill McCartney did an excellent job at halftime because, you know, really they didn't score the second half. And um, I think maybe they were a little shook with the way we were moving the ball and, and scoring so quickly. But right after the half, as you recall, in our first drive, we didn't get a first down and had to kick the ball to them, and so um, that should have given them an opportunity. You said you were going to turn Anthony Carter loose this week, and he was the guy that got you the big play right. starting the second half. And this is it. Uh, the punt to Anthony he comes right up the middle here and finds some daylight and gets to the outside. I don't. I think if Anthony had to do over again, he wouldn't have stepped out of bounds there because uh, I don't think that that uh, guy got a good enough hit on him to get him out of bounds. And, but he, he uh, stepped out there, so we, but we got great field position here now, and, 
come right back and give the ball to Stanley up the middle because we had been working the perimeter quite a bit and passing quite a bit and we, we felt we had to do some punching inside. But here's a uh, quick pass to Anthony um, over in the corner and that's the one that he runs so well and Steve put it up there beautifully and uh, we got the touchdown. When you say you're going to turn him loose, what does that mean? Does it well, mean well, that means we'll use him a lot more on the, on the kicking game and in other areas. I wish that youngster would carry that ball a little tighter. And, you know, that, uh, we picked up a little, a little extra yards on that fumble, but that, we're a little bit lucky there. Here Steve rolls out on the heavy defense and gives the ball to Stanley in the flat. Uh, they came after us hard, and, uh, and uh, that pass helped us quite a bit. This is Rick's in the tailback now, and he runs off tackle down inside the 15, and uh, we're knocking at the door again. Teams are doing that a lot to you, though, coming at you hard. A lot of people, a lot of blitzing. Well, I've never, I've never been as blitzed as much as I have the last two weeks. Just haven't been. Here's the option play, and uh, Steve uh, runs it in, standing up for the touchdown, and and uh, now we're, you know, we're starting to exert ourselves a little bit here and gain control of this thing. Uh, that was an important touchdown. But uh, you're right, Jim. They're coming after us awfully hard. A lot of blitzes and. I don't know whether they don't think they can stop us the other way or not. But here's um, reverse with Anthony and wisely went out of bounds there. He had three white shirts and no blockers and had the first down, so he went out of bounds. And it's needless to take that kind of a hit. I, well, that's the way I'd figure it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's Steve again rolling out, throwing the out cut to Anthony um, inside the 40-yard line. And uh, we're, in, we're in their territory again, four-down territory and ready to go. This was a heavy defense here, really, and uh, we ran the option against it, and, and uh, Steve kept the ball and got real good yardage. But um, I, I really, in the last two weeks, uh, and of course, we scored a lot of points, but they just keep coming after us with the blitz and the heavy defense. And the thing is, that opens up the pass, and Anthony's really yeah. your dangerous receiver. Mm -hmm. Here's uh, Ricks coming up the middle on a fourth down, short yardage play, and going all the way to, to the one, and then... Uh, comes right back and uh, scores on the next play, uh, running off tackle here uh, for the touchdown. And at this point, it's 49 to 21. Uh, because Illinois has such an offense, do you feel safe? Are you on the sideline? I'm going to be as honest with you as I can, Jim. <laughs> I, I, I didn't feel safe at any time. Now, when we got to 70, I felt safe. <laughs> uh, the way they moved that ball the first quarter, I was nervous the whole game. And the defense picked <laughs> up, too, the second half. Uh, yes, I thought they did a much better job in coverage and, um, and uh, you know, we did some things that helped and at least we got him scrambling out of the pocket and he throws an errant pass here that's picked off by Tony Jackson who returns it down inside the 30-yard line and we're in uh, scoring position again. So, um, but you're right, you know, these offenses are so explosive you don't know when uh, you've had enough. Uh, B.J. Dickey throwing over the middle to Vince Bean and uh, uh, interference uh, on the post cut and, and uh, so we have a first down. He had a tough day. He had a tough day, he really did. Uh, here's the trap play up the middle and uh, Stanley goes in standing up for a touchdown and we're uh, it's I fe feeling a little more secure <laughs> right now. But, With 56 but yeah. not secure enough. No. <laughs> here's an option play, B.J. Uh, Dickey pitches out to Rick Rogers, our, our freshman tailback and Rick gets down to the 10-yard line, and uh, a couple of plays later, um, goes in off tackle for the uh, touchdown, and this is his first collegiate touchdown, and uh, I don't think it'll be his last. He's, uh, I think he's going to be a good back. Also, good to, <coughs> that the kids get experience, these younger kids in the oh, second yeah. team, because you need these, all, these depth are, players. Yeah, these are all reserve players in there now, and uh, here's Dickey throwing to uh, Fred Brockington on a... Uh, on a, a deep pass, and once again, uh, Jim, they were up on, on us and just uh, defying us to run, and you know, there's not much else you can do. Uh, and then Dickey comes out here and uh, hits Tom Hassel, a sophomore uh, fullback for a touchdown, and I believe that's his uh, first collegiate touchdown. 70 to 21. Now, 